Alright, so now that our character moves and jumps, we're going to set up the animations for him. So, I'm going to right-click in my content browser and create a new animation blueprint. Right here. And we're going to select the skeleton uh, of our potato and click OK. And I'm going to call this Player Anim VP. You guys can call it what you want. Now, before we get into the Anim Blueprint, I just want to set up a couple of things here uh, for the animations to work properly. So you notice that we have a an idle. Where is it? There it is, an idle, a walk animation, and a run animation. And we also have a falling animation and a jumping animation. We're not going to be playing those individually in the Anim Blueprint. We're going to be using blend spaces. Now, blend spaces allow you to blend between two, actually multiple animations based on a value that you feed into the blend space. Uh, and you're going to see how that works in a second once we set it up. Uh, so, we're going to create a new, again, right click, and then we're going to go to the animation section uh, and create blend space one dimensional. And again, we're going to select the potato skeleton. And we're going to call this uh, idle walk run. And I'm going to open it up. So for the range here, this is for the player's movement. So as he moves faster on the ground, the animation will change. Now, if you recall, if I go to the player blueprint and check his movement component, you can see that he has a max walk speed of 600 and by default what when he's just walking not running we're only using uh half of that so the walking speed is 300 in this case and the running speed is 600 we just want to keep that in mind so our animations represent the movement properly so at zero he's not moving at 300 he's walking at 600 he's running and that's the maximum speed he can currently reach we'll call this speed and now that we have this down, we can actually drag the animations into... Actually, let's apply parameter changes. And I like to display editor vertically. So now, you notice that we have a range of 0 to 600. And you can see the numbers right here. So I'm going to go and grab some animations here. Idle. And we're going to drag that to 0. And our character disappeared. Probably a scaling issue. Let's see if we can find the guy. There we go. When I press F, it focuses on him. So he's really small. That might be something we have to deal with in the blueprint, but that's all right. But we can see his animation running now. He's standing. And I'm just going to check where the 300 point mark is. I can't seem to see it for some reason. Can I can I drag this back? Okay. So walk and we'll drag it to the half point mark. That's probably where 300 is. Okay. And finally, we're going to get the run and we're going to drag it to somewhere not at the top but close to it, I think. Um I think here is, well, let's put it at the top. Okay, so now we notice this blend space now will blend between the idle, and then as I go up, it starts to gradually incorporate the walking animation. And as I keep going above the walking animation, he starts using his bunny hop running animation. And that's how blend spaces work. They, allow, they blend between different animations based on in this case, the speed variable, which has a range of 0 to 600. Okay, so this blend space is set up. Now I'm going to create a, go back to player assets and create a new blend space. Again, right click, animation section, blend space one dimensional. And it has to be one dimensional for our purposes. Uh, now the second one is going to be jumping, falling. And this one will blend based on the player's Z velocity, whether he's jumping up or falling down. So in this case, we're going to make the range something like 200, sorry, 
negative, actually let's make it negative 300 to 300. And we're going to call this z velocity. Display vertically and apply. Okay. So now we're going to drag our animations in again. Potato falling. When the velocity is negative, he's falling, so we'll drag that down here. And again, he goes invisible. I'm just going to click over here and press F to refocus. I'm not really sure why he shrinks. It must be some kind of issue with the exporting. But it's not a big deal. So you notice he's using his falling animation here. And for jumping, I'm going to drag that at the top. And now he's using his jumping animation. So imagine we're starting somewhere up here. He jumps, and then he starts falling. And it's going to look, I think, pretty good once we uh, get the blueprint working with this, the animation blueprint, and we add it to the actual player blueprint. So I'm going to close that. Our always save. Our blend spaces are ready to use. So I'm going to go back to the player folder and open the player and MVP. And what I'm going to do is... Right, we better stop playing, I guess. I'm going to create a new state machine. Now we can call it what we want. We'll call it movement animations. And I'm going to connect it. And then I'm going to click into it to expand. So we're going to drag this out. And we're going to add a state. We'll call this idle walk run. And then we're going to add another state. We'll call this jumping falling. And this is the transition between them. <coughs> I'm going to open the idle walk run, go to the asset browser. And we already set up the animations in the blend space, so we're just going to drag this in and connect it. Now, there's our speed variable that's going to affect the how the uh, blend space behaves. So I'm going to right-click this and promote to variable. And we'll call this speed variable. And that's it for the idle walk run. And we're going to do the same for jumping falling. We're going to drag this in. And there's our z velocity, so we'll promote it to variable z velocity variable now one more thing we gotta do here is the transitions I'm just gonna drag from the border here into the idle walk run and this creates a transition so our animation system can go from idle walk run to jumping and falling and because we just created this other bridge it's gonna be able to go back to idle walk run depending on the player's state so to do this when do we want the player to go from walking on the ground or standing to jumping and falling? When he's not on the ground. So we're going to open this, which is we're going to open this little circle icon, which allows us to set the condition for when it transitions from idle walk run to jumping. And we're going to create a new variable and call it is falling. And that's just going to describe whether the character is not on the ground. Get and connect. And that's that condition. And we're going to manipulate these variables in the event graph soon enough. Now we're going to click this circle. And we're going to drag is falling again and set it to get. But we're going to add the not boolean to it. So it's the opposite of what the variable is. So is he not falling? In which case he should be using the idle walk run animation because he's on the ground now. I'm going to compile and save so I don't lose anything. And you notice we have no errors. If you didn't set the conditions for the transitions, you're going to get some kind of warning uh, or error that that you have to add them in before you can use this uh, anim blueprint. So this is set up now. Our character shrunk again. But he's running his animations. And if you want, you can try this. I'm going to go ahead and manipulate some of the variables here already. So you notice is falling true 
and now he's already using his jumping animation. And I can grab the z-velocity variable and drag it. And you notice now he's doing his jumping animation, and if I change it to, say, negative 200, he starts doing his falling animation. So we can see that our blueprint works. Now, our speed obviously doesn't affect our jumping, but if we uncheck his falling, now he switches to the idle walk run. You can actually see the switching over here, which thing it's running. You can see here that as I drag this up, he starts to switch animations. Well, I kind of dragged it too fast, but you get the point. You can actually see if it works over here. Okay, so now we get to the event graph. And you can see there's already two things set up for me here. Event blueprint update animation and try get pawn owner. Now, what we're going to do first is check if there's a valid pawn owner. As far as I know, this check just avoids errors and problems, but what they are exactly, I'm not sure, but it's just a good habit. So we're going to do it. We're going to look up is valid. And we're going to connect our try get pawn owner to it. And that's basically checking if he's valid or not. Now we can get to the actual manipulating variables and such. So the first thing we're going to need is to drag our variables that we want to change in here. And we're going to choose set. We're also going to drag in the z-velocity variable, also set, and is falling, also set. And we'll connect them. Okay, so now we have all our variables that control the animation in place. Now what I'm going to do is drag out this blue pin here from try get pawn owner. And I'm going to look up get movement component. And you want to make sure that you uncheck context sensitive if you're not getting it. So get movement component. And now we have it. So we're going to check is falling. So Unreal Engine has a way to track whether you're swimming, falling, flying, etc. in your movement component. And your movement component, if you remember, is where we set the uh, jump velocity and max walk speed. Actually, let me show it over here, player BP, components, movement component. So this thing right here is what we're asking whether the player is falling or not. And it's going to tell us if he's falling or not. So that's that variable taken care of. Now. Another thing we're going to drag out from try get pawn owner is the player's velocity. So get velocity. And so we're going to drag this yellow pin out and look up break. And we want to make sure we select break vector. So now we have our x, y, z. We don't care about x. We do care about y. And we're just going to drag that into speed variable. Trigger the autosave. And we're also going to drag the z into the z velocity variable. And we'll hit compile and save. I'll just move those so they look a little bit better. Now we're going to go to our player blueprint and actually apply the animation. So we're going to select the mesh for our character. And we're going to use animation blueprint. Um, let's see. It should be here, I believe. Player and BP. Okay. Now, you remember he shrunk when we applied animations. So we're going to see if that happens here. It probably will. Yep, and he shrunk. So let's just zoom in, and he's probably going to be... Somewhere in here. Very small. We'll just grab him and... Oh, he's down here. That's funny. Alright, so we're going to drag him up. And we're going to scale him up. So we'll set the scale to 1, 1, 1 initially and see how that looks. Nope, still needs to be bigger. I'm just going to click over here, press R, and then I'm just going to drag it out. Bring him down a little bit. Make him a little bit larger. Bring him down just so he fits into the capsule. And now we have our character, and his animations should be working. So we'll go and hit play.
And we notice the jump animations seem to work just fine. Uh, idle works just fine. I walk left, there's a walk animation. I walk right, there's no walk animation. That's odd. So what's going on here? Well, we have a little issue with our blend space. If we go back to idle walk run, you can see that our range is 600, 0 to 600. Now, when I'm walking left over here, you can see that I'm going on the positive y-axis. And when I'm walking right, it's negative. That's not in our range. Our range stops at 0, so there's no animation past that. Well, we're going to fix that in our animation blueprint. So, player anim BP, and in our event graph, what we're going to do is from get velocity, we're just going to look up vector length, and that's going to get the length of the vector as the name suggests. So instead, we're going to connect that over here. And you notice it automatically disconnected the uh, Y. If it didn't, make sure you just alt click the pin so it disconnects. And what this is going to do is it's going to use the length of the vector as the speed variable. Now, wouldn't jumping affect this value? It would, but if he's jumping, he wouldn't be using the idle walk run anyway, so we don't have a problem. So we're just going to compile and save and see if this fixes anything. Play, I'll walk right, and now I have a walking animation. Now let's do the sprint. You notice he starts jumping. Again, to the right. And everything seems to be working fine. And once I release, he goes back to his walking. I can jump. I can jump and hold shift. And that's not really going to affect his uh, animation while jumping. Cool. So now we have a character that walks, jumps, and has animations applied. 